piece. I've been working on this technique for a while and I'm really getting in there to explore. Um, I was really lucky in 2020 um, to be one of the last people that went on holiday and I spent a glorious eight days in the company of some florists, rock stars as I would say. They, 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 I got everyone's autograph, I got photographed with them. These are the movers and shakers around America and Canada. Um, and I, I, I could still be demonstrating in three years and still be talking about this trip because it was quite monumental in the fact that we had a, a three-day seminar and went into all the nuances about the industry. We looked at the trends, we looked at how we, the industry could be more sustainable, we, we looked at what florists and designers and educators need to do to this industry to captivate the next generation of millennials coming through. How do we talk to them? Where are they seeing themselves in 20 years? So really looking at the industry as a whole on, on March the 10th, 2020, but then looking at it in the future. And we were on the cusp of the world shutting down but we were still excited about the floristry industry. We were really excited, even though a lot of the participants were losing business and losing mass, major amounts of money because the world was shutting down, okay? Um, one of my all-time favorite, and I think um, a lady who belongs in the hearts of many of us, is Hitomi Gillian. And she is really looking at floristry on the education and really taking and wanting to take the world. But her arms are like this. She wants to take all of us with her. She's not just, I want to look at Canada, I want to look at America. No, she wants to take the world with her. Um, and with her educational videos and everything else. Um, but I would just like to introduce to one of her little techniques that she is experimenting with. And I'm thinking that you guys can really experiment with it. Tapestry sticks. It's not a new. It's not a new one. People have been doing it probably for years and years and years. But it's taking it to the next level. It's really experimenting with this technique. Um, I loved Helen's design with her sticks on the top. But you could also use this. You could use the woven sticks if you didn't have a tree outside that gave you sticks. You could make these woven um, sticks just at home. Um, where I started from with these were just two soft aluminium wires and um, they have a flashy thing called medallino sticks mm. or you have a bamboo cane blind and you chop the bamboo cane blind up and you um, put that together and then um, you can use a drilling technique which I can't remember who, which European designer first came up with it but it's, um, you put the nozzle, or you put the wire in the drill nozzle, you have your wire and a or wool, and you turn on the drill slowly, and it wraps its way around quite nicely. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit of a technique to get used to, because obviously too fast, you get a little bit out of control, too long, and it all whips around and causes a lot of vast amount of destruction. Um, so there is a little bit of trial and error, but once you get the technique correct and you've, you've really experimented with it, you can do all sorts of things. You've got beautiful movements, you can twist it around, you can create one, like I've done here, I've staggered the length of the aluminium, and so now I can turn it and twist it. So that's aluminium wire. This is aluminium wire. So I'm going to pass this around. So that's basically my basis for that. With experimentation, with trial and error, um, what I've done here, you can see I've got bigger wires and bigger clumps of the wool. Um, I've used a thicker wire, so experimenting <laughs> with wire, but it still needed to be aluminium. And I still need to have that movement and that pliability with it. So looking at the looking at different industries, so I found the the bonsai, the bonsai industry, they use um, a thicker aluminium wire to tie up some of their trees. But this thicker aluminium wire still 
creates some beautiful movement. So with this, I can still do that. It's like, I, I know I've just had lunch, but I could do that before lunch as well. So um, you can really manipulate this, but it looks rigid, it looks sturdy, it looks like I could do an awful lot of stuff with this. Um, and then you've got the little ones that obviously you have only got the aluminium wire in it. So the variety of having the different techniques and perfecting it. I've got some of the tapestry sticks that have just got one colour and then of course I've got board so I've then put two colours on because two rolls of wool going round is obviously quicker than one roll of wool going round. Um, and again, talking about the elements, it's all about form, all about line. So the form, I've repeated, and a repetition, I've repeated that circular form. I've then repeated the, the dynamic lines that we've got up through. The techniques that I've also got, um, I got into kokodamas a few years ago, which is the Japanese art of moss ball um, underneath and replacing the root system. Um, ladies that have seen my demonstrations before, I went through, the, I actually made a kokodama at Beecroft for some of the ladies a couple of years ago. <laughs> From then, I've really experimented and gone out. And Phalaenopsis are a very delicate, expensive plant. You don't really want to mess with them. But after experimenting with the, the succulents, after experimenting with calanchoes, I've then gone to experiment with the beautiful orchids. Now, this is the new spike. So it's happy. This plant is happy because it's actually throwing out a new spike. I did this. Um, Oh my goodness. Uh, we did it in February. It was just after uh, Valentine's. I, I was left with a couple of phalaenopsis, so I decided to make it a coconut. But again, it's using that same, it's the, the string going round, it's, it's the, the same ball like texture that I've got in it. Um, now, this one, I was, I was saying to, to Mary, I'm a little bit attached to the stand. It's a, it's a metal plate and a metal spike. But I'm very attached to it, so I'm sorry. This one's coming home with me, even though, <laughs> even though you go, it's just it's just wool, Mary. Um, but it's the stand. It's, I find it very tricky to get the floral art stands and the beautiful containers that you need for all of these lovely classifications, um, and you end up improvising. Um, my diagonal over there on the table is a water bottle, <laughs> and it's just like because I don't have the right container, I'm improvising. And so it's, when you find a treasured commodity that has so much versatility, I'm going to hold on to it. Um, again, thinking about color, painting the plate gray, then um, wrapping or binding, the, which is a lovely technique. Um, up the, the stand, um, I actually painted it gray first and then wrapped it in the wall. The base, there is actually a funnel. Um, it's, a, the, it's, it's just an ordinary funnel that you would, yeah, a classic funnel. Um, and again, I just sort of taped it onto the base and then wrapped it um, with the um, yarn. And then everything else sort of fell into place after that, um, twisting it around and making the, the movement as interesting as possible. How am I gonna get plant materials onto this? Well, the styrofoam balls at the back, I put a water tube in there. I put a water tube in the styrofoam balls before I then wrapped it all up. Um, with the twine um, and balls, I've actually got small glass water tubes in there. So I managed to get two of them in the larger ones. Um, and then I've got one up here that's pointing in a different direction. So I am going to, embellish this with some obviously some natural flower material as well. But quite si oh, so, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't actually say if anybody wanted to ask you a question. I do talk quite fast. <laughs> and there's not a lot of pause, but there is a pause, so jump in any time. <laughs> you mentioned millenniums. Could you act I mean I've heard the term a lot nice mm -hmm. you thirty something. Could you define No, they're the younger than that. Yes. Okay. So the millennials are actually younger. They are um, 20 to 27 years old currently. 
Um, so they've left school, they, they're in, just started the workforce, and they're out in the big bad world now, okay? But these are the generation that have seen so much advancement with technology. Um, they, are, they have seen the birth of the iPhone, the iPad, the screen time, the continuous 24-hour shopping. Um, they are that, they have been fed on um, a whole lifetime of, of flicking, flicking media and technology in front of them. Um, they haven't seen a war, they haven't seen any uh, problems, they've had everything because mum and dad and, and grandma and everyone, they, they've been indulged. So, but... That's all they know, cope with the cope. No. <laughs> Somebody's telling them they can't do something. I think they're saying they may not have experienced those As things, but they are very aware yes. of what is yes. happening in the world, okay. both yes. with yeah. the environment, um, because they are so in touch with social yeah. media, so yeah. it, it's a different world. Yeah, so Gail, that's exactly right. So they're into their plants. They don't see the value of flowers so much. No. But the plants and the plant growers are excelling themselves, coming up with the next unusual pepperonia, the mm. next unusual rubber plant. They've got a, anything, it's something unique. something unique. And they are filling their house of green because they understand the concept, they understand that the world is a, is a fragile a place to live in, so it's their green environment. We have fitted out the shop with so much plant, so many plants, and we, we, I sell at least two or three plants a week um, to young people that have just got a balcony, um, just got a flat, and they, they, just, they just want to, to fill their house with, with green. And, um, and looking at the TV programs, it's all about mm. lifestyle, it's all about, and there's mm. lots of programs now that actually tell you how to look after plants. Mm. And it's fabulous. So they don't necessarily, and they look at, they, they want the texture, they want the color, they want, but they don't necessarily know why they're looking at something or they don't know, they, they know that they just want something that's different. But we, we, we then have to educate them into saying, well, how are, we don't necessarily need a, um, a phalaenopsis orchid and a peony, or no, and a sweet pea or something like that. But they, they do, they just, they, they want less, but they want it more refined, I suppose. I find though, they still, when they get to the top of it, they're getting married, they still revert to something quite traditional. Yes. yes. It's really, really frustrating. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because, because, because we know because we know all these fantastic European designs yeah. that we'd really like to experiment with. Yeah. The bouquets that should be done there with that phalanox yeah. coming over it and the texture yes. that come up in that. That would accentuate a beautiful yeah. cream lace gown. Mm. Yes. To die for. Yes. No, I've marked it just Justin Eagle over the baby. Um, and 
we were the first bridesmaids party to wear green trousers in a traditional church. So, so that was quite, that was quite very edgy, very edgy. Um, a wedding to be remembered. A wedding, oh, it was, yes. <laughs> And then when I came along and, and got married, I used all Australiana in the church, and the ladies, a month later, were still using them, and they thought I was, it was brilliant, because the flowers <laughs> lasted and lasted and lasted. Um, okay, let's go back to where we are. So looking at color, looking at, um, again, ex really exploring the use of color, bringing in the green, I didn't want it to be a contrasting or too contrasting um, a design. Um, I wanted to continue the repetition of orchids. Um, in the lovely orchids, we've got a purple flash mm. on the throat, and I really wanted to draw that out in the Lysianthus. So quite a dominant, hidden, probably quite traditional, in fact, that I, where I've placed it, one third up, and you've got two thirds of the design go, still going on. Um, and place two together, but I just wanted them to go, here we are, and they create that circle. So it's also continuing that circle. So you're, hopefully your eyes aren't traveling too madly all over the place. Um, but the colors, and again, we've got that little white fleck in the Lysianthus, which then come back to the orchids um, and, and just sort of show that where we are with the, with the orchids as well. Um, so I'm hoping you're enjoying this one, because it's, um, this one was my nemesis actually. Everything else sort of came together quite, quite nicely, but this one, um, it, it sort of, it gave me a little bit of problem solving um, exercise, but I quite like a bit of problem solving exercise, because it's just like, oh, you're not quite going together as I planned. So then you go back to your principles and elements. You go back to your traditional um, way of looking at it. It's like, what do I need to really make this more contemporary? What, what <coughs> elements or what principles can I really pull to actually bring this out? So again, it goes down to the repetition of form, repetition of line, um, with that gentle, diminished look at color, because I didn't want color to overtake it. And then thinking about water sources, um, I've got um, the glass water bath, which I'm going to try and find now. Um, I can see it, but I can't see the opening. But I'd like to get the height. Now, what I'd like to do is just leave that going. Ta da! So, <laughs> noise, noise effects by my phony assistant. Um, <laughs> um, and if you don't swing that too fast, I'm thinking that that's. Because I quite like the fact that the top is, is doing a little bit of that. I've still got two more down here. So that brings, again, depth. We've got to look at depth, how we're actually going to create depth in this design. Um, and by <coughs> placing that little orchid. Or do I need, no, I don't need, no, I don't need that there. Um, Trixie, another carnation. Again, I've tucked in a little Trixie down at the back here, just to create another drawing down into the centre, a different texture under the Lysianthus. But just to bring it out... Oh, they're, they are so... they're tricky Trixies. Um, because even when you buy them at the flower markets, they, um, they're quite brittle. They're quite brittle in the fact that they will um, at an inch too long. I just need it to nestle. So looking at the length of material, I just need it to nestle in there. So that's nestling now. Um, and then I'm drawing that, so working in a diagonal line across the design. I, now I am going to love these mini when I get home, but I am seem to be slipping into them. With gay abandons. And we've all talked about this weekend how expensive flowers are, so I really need to respect what I've got. So I shall. Oh, look, that, that's beautiful. I didn't realize that. So, what we've actually got here, <laughs> um, getting all excited now, the actual bud of the Lysianthus is the same shape 
as the yeah, end. Yeah, you yeah, see, yeah, you worked yeah. that one out way before. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is my second piece.